every time you hear the word church is not referring to a physical building it's referring to the people that make up the group the mercy of god is not just about forgiveness of sins the mercy of god allows things to work for a person blind Bartimaeus cried out to jesus and said son of david have mercy on me when he says is the lift of your head he can use anyone to help you when situations may look bleak hold them to go to God be the glory now if you have a testimony please register your interest with Deacon Daniel or Deaconess for me Deacon Daniel just wave let them see you those of you in the overflow just beckon to one of the ushers and they will direct you to the people you need to speak to so that that way we know how many people are giving testimonies and we'll know how many people we need to accommodate. Hallelujah. Lord, as we look into your word today, we pray that you will speak to us. We pray that Jesus will be glorified. We pray that the name of your, our Father, Yeshua, will be magnified. What you alone can do, you will do for us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' wonderful name, I pray. Today I'm going to share briefly, being our Thanksgiving, on the topic, It Can Be Done With God. Hallelujah. Because the Bible makes it clear that for with God all things are possible. So I want you to know without a shadow of doubt that with God it can be done. What did I say? With God it can be done. I have got a very long um, scripture of the Bible, 2 Samuel 23 from verses 1 to 17. 2 Samuel 23 from verse 1 to, 20, from verse 1 to 17. Now this are the last words of David, the son of Jesse, declares. The man who was raised on high, on high declares. The anointed of God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel. The spirit of the Lord spoke by me and his word was on my tongue. The God of Israel, the rock of Israel, spoke to me. He who rules over men righteously, who rules in the fear of God, is like the morning light when the sun rises, a morning without clouds, when the fresh grass springs out of the earth, true sunshine after rain. Truly is not my house so blessed with God, for he has made an everlasting covenant with me, ordered in all things and secured, for he will not cause to grow and prosper all my salvation, for will he not cause to grow and prosper all my salvation and my every wish? Will he not make it grow and prosper? But the wicked and the worthless are all to be thrown away like thorns, because they cannot be taken with the hand. But the man who touches them must be alarmed, hallelujah, must be harmed with iron and the shaft of a spear, and they are utterly burned and consumed by fire in their place. Let's go to verse 17 because of our time. After that first seven verses, he now began to talk about, you know, the mighty men of David. He talked about several warriors. He talked about Eliezer. But where I want us to go, let's go to verse 17, the last verse. And he said, far be it from me. Or should we, let's start so that we can get from verse 14, from verse 14. 
Then David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. Where were the garrisons of the Philistines? In Bethlehem. It was in a stronghold where it was like a protection, but the enemy, the Philistines, were in Bethlehem. Hallelujah. David was, and then David had a craving, hallelujah, and said, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. Verse 16, so the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water from the well of Bethlehem by the gate and carried it and brought it to David. But he would not drink it, but poured it out in worship to the Lord. Hallelujah. And he said, far be it from me, O Lord, that I should drink this. Is, is it not the same as the blood of the men who went at the risk of their lives? So he would not drink it. These things the three mighty men did. God bless the reading of his word. See, there's something Charles Spurgeon said. He made a quote that I'm going to read out to us. He said, a Bible that is falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. Because at his own time, in the uh, centuries back, when he was alive, the paper copy was all they had. And you can tell who was a student of the word just by looking at some of their Bibles. I'm not talking about somebody trying to pretend and painting it and doing all those funny things. But someone that is genuinely seeking the face of God through the word of God. That fellow happens to be somebody that the Bible said a Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to someone that is life or who isn't, which means his life isn't falling apart. So when we look at the pages of the Bible today that we've read, if you get home, you can read the other versions or the other parts where it was talking about the things that the three mighty men did. But David longed. There was an hunger and a thirst in David. Hallelujah. So it is time for us to stop making excuses. It can be done with God. Time to stop doing what? Making excuses. Now, David did not ask the three mighty men to go anywhere. All he said was the desire of his heart. And God touched these three men. And they went all out to do whatever they need to do. Even in this month of, the month of January that just passed, I have seen God at work. Amen? Where what seems impossible to man became possible. Hallelujah. I have seen people in this church that the craving of their heart, God raised men for them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. It is time to stop making excuses. It cannot be done. It has never happened before. Who told you that God cannot do it? It is time to also stop explaining our failures. There's a reason for some of these things. This David we're looking at, there was no formal education with him. He didn't go to any university to collect any degree. But when God decided to choose him and anoint him, nobody could stop it. If you think that the challenge you have is that you are in the midst of, of giants, you are in the midst, you, 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 are, you, are, you are like in the minority, welcome. Yes, we are. But that does not stop God from doing what he needs to do in our lives. Because you need to look around yourself. The things you are saying cannot be done. Someone else is doing it. And you are here giving yourself excuses. The thing you say, ah, nobody has done it. But it's been done. 
this world, there are principles you must follow. Hallelujah. So if there are things that cannot, you are saying cannot be done and other people are doing it, it tells me that then it can be done. But the question is, are you hungry and thirsty like David? Are you desirous of more of Jesus? Where is your hunger? Where is your thirst? When they tell you no, do you just accept it and move on? The only no you should accept is when man says no, and God is also telling you, that's true, that's what I want. Hallelujah. Because as long as God has not said no, man can say no for all they like. If it's of God to say yes, it will come to pass. Abraham Lincoln, the great American president, do you know how many times he contested for different offices? Didn't win. <laughs> Yet there was something in the man that said, I must rule this nation and make things better. And he never gave up. If it was about failure, that man is a, we can see him and say, this guy is a failure. I'm beginning to wonder, how can they, you that, you are, even your locality, they are not voting for you, but your own nation voted for you. Now when the whole nation voted for him, remember that we're talking about how many years ago, this guy, there was no TV advert, there was nothing like that. The best they would have offered is people riding horses and crying and making noise about them and putting posters about to say, vote for this man. He will be a great president. And they relied on the picture they were seeing and what others are telling them, even though they may never see that man. David the king was hungry and thirsty. Even though what he was hungry for seemed impossible because he would just say, ah, oh, how I wish I can just take from, you know, the well in Bethlehem. Knowing fully well that a Bethlehem is heavily guarded. Bethlehem is the camp of the enemy. It tells me that whatever the enemy has taken from you, God can take it back. Wake up, people. The God we serve is not those God he used to serve, oh. <laughs> this is the king of kings, the lord of lords, the one that can do all things, the one that there's nothing impossible with. He told Abraham, he said, is there anything to add for me? I'm telling you that a woman of 90 will give birth and she will laugh. By this time next year, that's all, settled. <laughs> According to the time of life, Settled. Who told you that it cannot be done? Who has lied to you? He did not call anybody's name. He did not ask for help from any person. But these three mighty men, they responded to his hunger. They responded to the thirst he had for that water. And I've come to realize that in life, it's not about location. <laughs> As that cliche is about a location. It is not about the location. Look, you can be in the most terrible, there's no country in this world. The poorest of the poorest, there are rich people there. Go and find out. Whether it's Sudan, even let there be war, Yemen, everywhere, there are still people that are rich. And guess what? If anything happens in that country, the richest of the richest, other countries will be telling them, come on, we'll, come, come, we'll, we'll, look, we'll give you space. Hallelujah. Ukraine, there's what? There are still people in Ukraine. With all the work going on, they are making money. And they are from that same country. It can be done. It's not about your location. It's about what God has provided for you. Hallelujah. Where's your hunger for the things of God? 
Because everything God wants to do, it starts with that hunger. It starts with that thirst. Because how hungry, how intense is your hunger and the thirst for the next dimension of your life? This cannot be all about you. It can't be. You mean you are going to come and go and that's the end? Where is the mark you need to leave in this world? That the day you depart this world, there are people weeping, saying, Ah, this was a man. And I want you to know that God responds to thirst and hunger for the uncommon things. When you read that, when you're understanding what they, that was something that was uncommon. The request he made <laughs> was uncommon. Those three mighty men will also be foolish to think it was by their strength and power they were able to do what they did. That's why he poured it out. So this one, I can see the hand of God there. I can't drink it. Because I want to let you know that when you have a desire that is of God, it's not about money now. If you have a very brilliant idea from God, guess what? That idea, if it needs $300 million to bring it to pass, God will connect you with the ones that have it. And that's the truth. I've seen people that they didn't have nada. And when you see what God is doing in their life, you'll be like, how did you start? How did it come to pass? And I realize it can be done with God. I pray for you that men that matter will respond to your hunger. If these three mighty men can endanger their lives for David, I'm assured that you and I are safe. We are secured. See, people that would defend us will arise. They may not know us. They will still arise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember the story. I can't remember whether it was the general overseer that was sharing it. Where they were, you know, getting rid of people in their company. And the, <laughs> and the, uh, was it the manager then? Thought he was wise. Very wise. And he wanted to get rid of the one he hated the most. So he put the fellow's name as number one on the list. So that at least, and I think there were about up to 28 people. So when, the man, when he now got to the MD and gave them that this is the list he has compiled, the MD does say from number two down, get rid of them. In the MD's mind, number one is the best. <laughs> so let's keep this one. The rest, fire them. It wasn't alphabetical, so the man just assumed number one must be one of the best staff we have. <laughs> so I only need one. Get rid of the rest. So the manager could not say, Oga, <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> the list is wrong. Let's rearrange it. Amen. So number one point I want you to, le- to get from this lesson, from this scripture, three lessons to note. I'll probably say one or two. God's faithfulness is real in the lives of his people. God's faithfulness is real in the lives of his people. I'll give you a scripture reference, the same Second Samuel 23, just verse 1 to 5. David was saying some things there about the faithfulness of God in the life of his people. Divine possibilities that are presented to us because God is faithful. Hallelujah. He said, the man who was raised on high declares, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet summit of Israel. He was declaring, he said, the spirit of the Lord spoke by me and his word was on my tongue. Hallelujah. The, the God of Israel, the rock of Israel spoke to me. He who rules over men righteously, who rules in the fear of God. 
is like the morning light when the sun rises, a morning with clouds when the fresh grass springs out of the earth, true sunshine after rain. Truly, is not my house so blessed with God? Faithfulness. For he has made an everlasting covenant with me. He's faithful. I, told, I can't remember, was it last week? I was telling us that, how can you make a covenant with a man? A man, a man, a man. A man that disappointed you. A man that did so many terrible things. And yet, after the man is dead, you are still saying, because of what I said concerning David, somebody must sit on this throne. Whether they are good or not. Hallelujah. God is faithful in the lives of his people. David's life was not perfect, but he was chosen. He was anointed. As God has chosen you and I, 1 Peter 2.9, we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, <laughs> to show forth the light of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Don't live as if you don't have a God. Don't live as if you don't have an heavenly father. It can be done with God. Never forget. Even though David's life was not easy. Don't let us... <laughs> he knew God. God knew him. He was a man after God's heart. Yet his life was not easy. He faced many trials, many tribulations. You are anointed king and you are running away from the current king for so many years. So that it doesn't kill you. And yet you know you are the one that has been chosen to sit on that same throne. How do you undo that? Knowing that the guy giving you instruction, <laughs> you are actually the guy in the future. <laughs> And God has showed you. And you must still respect. Still be courteous. Because God is faithful. What he said, he will bring it to pass. And you must realize from that scripture we read. That. That. The possibilities of God are not limited by circumstances. The possibilities of God, they are not limited by what you are going through. When the scripture says things like it can raise a beggar from a dunghill <laughs> to the throne, it can. It's possible with God. It can be done. And David understood that even the possibilities of God goes beyond the life we're living now. Even in eternity, there are still possibilities. Because he's the one that determines where you go. So trials and tribulations may come. They are there to help us know God better. I pray that we will begin to see trials, we we'll begin to see tribulations as a way of God saying, come closer. I'm telling you. And I learned this. I always tell my wife that <laughs> there are so many things. While she was talking today about, you know, um, uh, blame game, blame culture, and all these things. The truth remains that it's, you can blame when you have a choice. When you know you don't have a choice, you don't go there and blame and be pointing fingers at people. When people even speak to you rudely and harshly, in a demeaning way, guess what? If you know where you're going, you know how to answer. Hallelujah. And God taught me so many lessons in life that I always share with my wife. That when I lost my parents, I know what I went through. God dealt with pride. Out of my life. When my parents were alive, when things were going well, my punishment that they want to punish me, 
that have misbehaved is to go and stay with my uh, elder ones abroad so that I'm not in Nigeria during holiday. If I annoy him, that's, you are, you've annoyed them. <laughs> hey, go and stay with your sister. Go and stay with your brother. Uh, because what I would do during that holiday as the youngest uh, is trouble. They know. I caught trouble. Trouble sees me and says, ah, we know where we're going. <laughs> uh, uh, that's me, oh. My challenge when I was in secondary school, if you tell me that you're a Christian, I will make sure I, you are my mission. You see, God? You were my mission that you, Christian, I will make sure you are not. I'm telling you. I'm not sure they will be hearing this for the first time. <laughs> I said, ah, so this one, you are like me. <laughs> uh, I used to call trouble. Yeah, yeah call trouble. They will tell us, oh, if you blow a transformer, you get mercury eh? in Nigeria. Eh? You know, you, the way you are laughing. <laughs> so you've done it before, so I'm not the only one. <laughs> Those of you here, you don't understand. You don't see transformers. <laughs> all, you, all they call it is substations. <laughs> and the substation is behind the building. So we would take uh, that sling. We call it catapult. You take a sling. And I hit it so that the thing can break and take the crystal. And then we'll be running about to look for who will melt it. It's all a lie, yo. <laughs> I've done some terrible things. But when death struck, ah, <laughs> uh, 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 and I became a Christian, my prayer. I don't think there was any day that I would say, Father, when your father, mother and father forsake you, then you will take me up. I'm, I'm, only, I'm yours. Though. I'm yours. So there are times in university, 40 days, three months, no food except cassava. So you will fast by force. When they see you, ah, bro, ah, what's happening to you? Ah, I'm on the mountain. <laughs> These are compulsory mountain. Why? What I realized in those journey, it can be done with God. There's nothing God cannot do for you. All he needs is your attention. When tribulations come and trials come, he's seeking for your attention. Say you have been distracted too much. Let me allow this one to rattle you a bit so that you can focus. You are relaxed. Let me wrap to you a bit so that you can say, God, what's happening? I pray that whatever you are trusting God for in this month, God will do it for you. Amen. The power and the presence of God over your life will be manifested more and more. Amen. This month, you will have reasons to thank him. Amen. The power of God will overshadow you. Amen. Whatever he has done for you in January, in this month it will be greater. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I pray that you will see the possibilities of God in your life. Amen. You will see the possibilities of God in Amen. your life. You will see the possibilities of God in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Things happened last month that shook myself. I, my wife, I was telling my wife, I said, this one, I'm afraid of God. I'm afraid of God. <laughs> and when he's doing something mighty in the life of others, I'm quick to say, where's my own? No? God, if you can do it for so, so, and so, please attend to my prayers. Lord, we thank you. We give you the praise, the glory, the honor, and the adoration. We thank you because there's no one like you. The master of the universe. The controller of all situations. The perfecter of our peace. I thank you. The healing God. The savior himself. The Messiah himself. Oh, thank you so much. The God that can do all things, thank you. The bishop and the shepherd of our soul, we bless you. The first and the last, the beginning and the end of all lives, we thank you. Ah, the soon and coming king, we bless your name. 
the miracle worker, the way, the way maker. We thank you. There's no one like you. Thank you for everything again that you did in the month of January for us. Thank you for every family that you have put laughter into their lives. We glorify your name. More than ever before, Lord, I pray that your name will be exalted more and more in our lives this month. You will do what you alone can do for us. And Jesus and Jesus alone will be glorified. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Celebrate him with a clap offering. <laughs>